Welcome to example 5 on how to have automatic train traffic on any EEP model railway simulator layout without writing any Lua code yourself. All you have to do is specify your layout in some data tables. So far we worked with a small demo layout to have a look at the concept, but now that we know how to configure a layout, yeah, it's time for something more serious like a real model railway layout like this where seven trains are happily driving around. By the way, this is the layout that I had in my house before I moved to a smaller house and did not have room for it anymore. This is how it looks uh, from the top and it may look as a still a simple model railway layout but there actually are quite a few driving options let's have a look at those we can have a full round uh, counterclockwise from the station back to the station and in the same way we have a route that is uh, clockwise for maybe two trains uh, from station to station and then we have all these industry areas where cargo trains or even a passenger train could shuttle and from here to the station and vice versa of course and then we can also go all the way around from here through the station and then back to the other side and vice versa and that's not all we can also go from this industry area to this industry area and vice versa and we could even go uh, like this all the way around through this uh, single track over there to the railway station i deliberately by the way put in this single track i could have uh, made this double track of course but i like to have that just for the trains to have to wait for each other and decelerate and accelerate there's a little bit more going on like this and this is how it looks in EEP 2D design mode. We have so many stuff uh, that it is now going to be impossible to prepare such a sheet with the numbers on. Uh, if you would like to know the number of a specific signal, all you can do is uh, select it, then right click it and it will show the signal number over there. What I also did is uh, you have this layout in SCARM and then I depicted the block numbers in bold and the turnout numbers uh, in non-bold so that I can have a look when I create a route which turnouts I have to switch in which state. This is for my, to me at least easier to look at than the EEP layout. Uh, we see also that we have three two-way traffic uh, blocks over here and one over here numbers 17 and 18 and here we have 26 and 27 and 21 and 22 those are twin sister blocks that we have to take care of well why not have a look at the Lua uh, configuration code here they are the two-way blocks uh, when a train drives in block 17 this table tells Lua it also has to reserve block 18 and the same if it drives into block 18 it has to reserve block 17 and then the same for blocks 21 and 22 and the same for blocks 26 and 27 Mm, let's go to the trains yeah we we still recognize our good old number one the steam engine uh, but yeah uh, and also the uh, blue one and the orange one but we uh, have added or i have added four more trains on this layout and they all need to have one of them those on off switches and i place those on the control panel and uh, all we have to do is uh, write down the numbers here as they are and then we have the the blocks and yeah as usual we only fill those in once we have placed the trains for the very first time now that we have seven trains yeah we also have seven of these lines with the allowed blocks this is what you have to decide for yourself which train do you allow in which blocks 
Well, the uh, train steam uh, number one is allowed on the counterclockwise circle, so to speak, and I gave it a waiting time in the station. Then there are a whole lot of blocks where it is not allowed to come, and then all the other blocks where it is allowed, they have a one, that is no waiting time. And this is what you fill in. It is all, uh, yeah, you have to decide for yourself. What do you like to happen? Which trains are allowed in which blocks and, and where not? And uh, that, uh, yeah, that is just some, uh, some thinking that is involved on what you like to happen. And then we have the line with the block signals, uh, 27 of them in this layout. Yeah, and all that we have to do is have a block signal in every block and write down the number here in this line and try to not make any mistakes. And the same holds for the signals that we have on our control panel that shows where the trains are. Make no mistakes. Then we get to our routes, the routes that we have to define ourselves. That table is, let's see, uh, 43 routes on this layout. Um, well, we are not going to do all of them. Let's do an example. Let's do the route from 7 to 26 and then from 26 to 13. That's this picture over here from one industry section to another. And if we have a look at the route from 7 to 26, then the first turnout that we are going to pass is number 13, and it has to be put on branch. And then we come across turnout number 11, and it has to be put on branch. Um, and then we are in block 26, and now we want to go from 26 to 13. That's over here. The first turnout that we come across is number 7, and that has to be put on branch. Then we see 21, which has to be put on straight. Then we come at 22, which also has to be put on straight. And finally, turnout number 18 has to be put on branch. And this is the way that you simply straightforward fill in every route between two blocks. All of them have to be in this table and then all will be fine. Well, it may be a wise thing to test all of them uh, before you start to drive with seven trains because if one of these numbers is wrong, then uh, yeah, troubles will happen and it can be difficult to figure out what went wrong. Finally, as usual, we have our uh, main switch. The number on this layout is number 80. And then we have uh, for the main switch, the block signals and the memory signals, the states of green and red. That is all. Nothing has to be changed below this line. Let's drive some trains. This is the live EEP layout and yeah, like this we cannot see the control panel. I prepared a couple of camera views and one of them is the control panel. Let's just switch on that main switch and all the seven train switches are off. The final three of them are the cargo trains. So uh, yeah, there it goes. One of the cargo trains on the move. Another cargo train, yeah, this yellow one on the move, and the final cargo train over there, yeah, that's also on the move. You can uh, start or stop them individually, and they will do what you tell them to do. Well, let's, uh, let's just switch on all the trains, why not? That's the most fun, isn't it? And uh, let's go to camera, uh, what was it, uh, station 2, that is a nice overview where we can see everything that happens and yeah well what uh, there's nothing more to tell so just uh, let's have a, a look what uh, what is happening with this train traffic and uh, yeah we can try to follow what is happening here in this event screen it uh, it tells every time when a train has arrived and when a train starts a new route
For now, uh, let's back, go back to the control panel and switch off the layout. Always a good thing to wait until the trains have all stopped and then we can close EEP and it will start up the next time without any trouble. trains are where they need to be let's close eep and thank you for watching and maybe see you in the next video of which i do not yet know the subject <laughs>